WROI 936 on this Wednesday morning, and the sun has finally come out. And that's probably because Brian Johnson and Allison Heidi are in the studios. Welcome, welcome, one and all. We'd like to take credit for it, but... Well, you brought it with you, so we, I'm going to give okay. you credit. Well, good. Well, we can we can quote Mr. Rogers and say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Today. There you go. How's that sound? Yeah, so. Tom Hanks will play you in the movie. All right. <laughs> there you go. So, Well, hey, we got a lot of things going on at the foundation. Yeah, community um, foundation, by we've, the way. We've got, a, um, of course, we're looking at end of year. Um, so if folks are still looking for that last-minute gift, um, if you have somebody that has everything that they need, but you still need to find a gift for them, um, some people choose to make a gift to the fund at the, at the foundation. Um, it's a gift that can honor somebody and continue to give back to our community. Um, so that'll be um, would be one option. Also, save on some taxes potentially. Um, but if you're if you're looking to do that, we'd love to to help that happen. Um, just a couple of logistics. Our office will actually be closed on the 24th and the 25th. Um, so if you are planning to make a gift before Christmas for somebody's Christmas gift, um, you'll need to get that in um, yet this week. Um, and then looking at end of year. Um, our office will be open the morning of Christmas Eve, but closing at noon or New Year's Eve, excuse me, and then o- close that afternoon and, and closed um, on New Year's Day in honor of the holiday. So, um, but I'd, I'd encourage folks if you're still looking for that gift and um, somebody would be honored by a gift to a fund at the foundation, um, we can help make that happen. Also, um, thinking about year end giving, um, still have have time to do some of that. So. Um, couple of things, a um, couple of reminders. Um, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Unfortunately, Baron, me and you aren't qualified to be in this group, but Allison no. is part of this group. So, um, a group of, of local women that um, provide $120 in dues annually, and then half of those are added to an endowment fund. Half of that is granted out each year. Each year, the group gives out between five and six thousand um, plus. To local needs. So if if you are a member of that and haven't renewed your dues for 2019 or you're interested in joining that group for 2019, um, you can get those dues in. You can either do that with a, a check coming to our office or do that online, um, nicf.org, and there's a donate button that, that um, ladies can hit um, to be able to make that contribution for that. And we only meet one time a year, time so a year. it's a great yes. way for busy people to be involved in the community and make an impact with um, some uh, projects that are currently in the in the area. So um, it's a fun group of ladies, and like it I is. said, one time a year, it's pretty easy easy uh, to belong to. So, so there we have we now have a member testimonial there you on, yes. on That's our right. show today. So <laughs> and it's only one it's time of the year. They know it's got to be hopping. It is. It is. It's a pretty good good thing. And and the neat thing about that is during that meeting, the ladies get to give away money, and they're the ones that decide on where those grants go. So it's it's neat. Since that group has been formed in 2011, um, they've provided over forty four thousand dollars in local projects and um, supporting organi- organizations and just needs in our community. So um, wonderful to see that. So. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about scholarship applications here with Allison in a moment, um, but just a reminder, those applications are available on our website, nicf.org. Um, if you are a high school senior, please check that out. And like I said, we'll talk a little bit more detailed about that here in a moment. Um, can I donate through your website? You can donate through our website. PayPal yes. or whatever. It, it, we do use PayPal right now, but um, everything can actually be done through our website. Um, if you go to nicf.org and click on a donate button right on the main page, you can follow the link there, and it will guide you through the process of choosing an amount, um, choosing what fund. You can actually give to multiple funds. If you say, hey, I want to give to two or three different funds, or if I just want to give to one fund, or... I want to find a fund that does something specific, whether it be maybe a scholarship fund or support some need in the community, um, something like that. That can all be done online as well. So it's it's um, we we try and make it simple. You can also make um, reoccurring donations. If somebody says, "Hey, I can't give you 
$100 now, but I can maybe give you $10 a month. That's something that that can be done through our website as well. Pretty simple. So, um, yeah, and that's and really that's the beauty of the community foundation is we take all of the donations that we receive and and together they make a bigger impact than than say my individual donation that may not be as large as somebody like Bill Gates who's independently wealthy, but combined as a whole we make a huge impact in the community. So that kind of kind of leads me into the. 2018 highlights when we when we talk about those combined gifts over the last 25 years um, we've had donors give give gifts this last year we were able to give out in 2018 now this does not include the Lily number um, but over $133,000 in scholarships to local students if we had the Lily number correct me if I'm wrong Allison but I think that bumps that number up to around two hundred thousand dollars total, um, when That's we start right. start looking at um, per year, four years of mm-hmm. four students going to school. Um, one thing that we've talked about a lot recently is our um, community grants. Um, so our community support grants and impact grants. Um, this year, we also were able to celebrate our 25th anniversary with what we've called pop-up grants. So we would show up at organizations and say, congratulations, you didn't apply for this, but we're giving you some money. Thank you for being in our community. Thank you for the service that you provide. And so um, between those grants, we were able to give out over $180,000 in grants um, supporting different projects. And, and as a whole, in 2018, we've been able to give out over $700,000 in everything we do, whether that be for grants, for scholarships, supporting specific organizations or causes in our community. So um, I'd just like to say thank you to donors who have made this possible, because without our community and without donors that that have trusted in the foundation and and supported it financially, um, those wouldn't have been possible. Um, something else, I guess we can say, as heard on WROI, Giving Tuesday. Um, yep. It's we appreciate you guys being a part of part of Giving Tuesday. That's the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, of course, the exciting thing this year is we do have a a match from Lily Endowment that's going on, and we're able to capitalize on that. Um, on Giving Tuesday, we had um, just over ninety two thousand dollars in donations to various funds. Um, of that. Over $53,000 was given towards community funds. And the exciting thing about that, if you have not heard, um, Lily Endowment is matching those community funds right now. Um, $2 for every dollar given. So that $53,000 turned into about $150,000 in value for our for our community. And um, that match is still going on. It wasn't just on Giving Tuesday. That match is still going on. To date, we've raised um, about $150,000 of the match. Our goal is to raise $250,000 locally that Lily will match with $500,000 for community funds. And that will, in turn, let us make even more community grants um, that'll turn into about thirty to thirty five thousand dollars a year in additional grants that we can give out to Fulton County needs. So it's it's really neat to see how that has happened and how that has grown. So if that's something that, that you're interested, of course we have a list of community funds that qualify for those matching funds on our website. If somebody is interested in creating a community fund, um, whether it be in their name, family name, in honor of somebody, in memory of somebody, um, we'd love to talk to you about the logistics of how that happens too because now would be a great time um, to be able to do that with um, significant less funding than it would would take um, in a re- at a time when we don't have the Lily match. So um, thank you to Lily Endowment for offering this opportunity again to us. Um, and we're appreciative of the community. I mean, in the last three months to raise over half of what we need to match, that's pretty amazing. Um, we always say we have a generous community, and it's times like this that really prove that, that that's true. So, Well, today we have with us um, Allison Heidi. Welcome, Allison. Thank you. Allison, you're our, our scholarship coordinator at the Community Foundation, and it's Christmas break, and 
students have extra time so we mentioned that our scholarship application is available so so tell us a little bit about what we have going on in the scholarship world right now okay well we um, like Brian said we have a very very generous community and um, we have close to hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we have given out um, you know last year and, it, and that goes on every year to local students so um, our application is online. It can be found at our website at www.nicf.org. It's a pretty simple online scholarship. Um, you fill it out and you are matched automatically to those scholarships that you qualify for. The applications are due March 1st. Um, we award those scholarships at high school uh, awards ceremonies that are usually in the May time frame. And then when they're paid, they're actually paid to this college that you're going to attend. So um, it's, it's, like I said, a very easy online application. You're going to be asked uh, things like where you want to go to school, how much is it going to cost you, um, how are you planning on uh, paying for this, you know, where is your shortfall. Um, you're going to need to know uh, the activities that you've participated in in high school. We allow you to put in 10 activities, um, and we'd like you to put those in order of what's important to you. So there, there's some thought behind filling out this application. You'll have to probably submit a couple essays, and you'll probably need to uh, have a letter of recommendation from a, a couple people. So that process, again, is all online. So in order to get a letter of recommendation, it's nothing handwritten that comes into the Community Foundation. It's all through our system. So you would enter um, someone's email address. They'd get a notification that you'd like them to complete this letter of recommendation for them. So we think it's very important that you ask the person that you'd like to fill out this application for you if it's okay and get their permission before uh, you just submit their name to the uh, request. Yeah. Um, so right now is a good time to be thinking about what you have done in high school um, and just kind of keep that all together so that when you do decide to go online and fill this out, you've got all this information available. Some of our scholarships are need-based. So if you are looking for any need-based scholarships, uh, you will be required to upload your FAFSA, your EFC, which is your estimated family contribution. Um, and if you have any questions at all as you get into this process, you know, you can contact me at the Community Foundation. Um, we're happy to help you through any of the um, challenges you might find on the online system. But it, we've done this probably five years now, and it's it's pretty easy online application. So as students are home from Christmas break, now would be a good time to check that out and get, get a lot of those pieces completed if, if they're looking at going for further education. That's absolutely right. It's nothing that needs to be completed in one sitting. You, you know, log in and then you can just do it as you want to, you know, over the next couple months. So yeah. um, pretty easy. And tell us one, one thing that's always exciting every year. We have a few new scholarships um, that we are able to offer. So maybe give us a little bit of information about some of those that we have this year. We do. We have two new ones for the high school students um, that include the high school students. One is the Eric Smoker Memorial Scholarship. And that's for um, Fulton County residents that are studying art, drama, music, graphic design, those types of um, majors. Uh, and then we have another one for students that are um, going into the field of education with preference given to those studying special education. And that's the Linda J. Wilkinson Special Education Scholarship. Again, these are for local high school students. So you'll be, if you qualify for these, you'll be automatically matched to those. And then we have a couple that are available to college students. Um, that will become available next summer, and that is the Baxter Family Pharmaceutical Scho Scholarship, and that's for students, um, Fulton County students, that are studying pharmaceutical programs within the state of Indiana. And the other one is the Philip Bryman Scholarship, and that is for uh, students 
that are going to Purdue University. Um, again, these are already students that are in college. Yeah. So, if, so if you're a college student and you're home for winter break, keep your eye on our website. Um, we try and keep information information on our website, also on our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. I know you go to the you go to the schools as well. We do um, to their evenings. We do. We. Um, uh, many schools have a, a college night where they're, you know, trying to let the um, students know how to do the FAFSA, how to complete scholarships, just kind of a information gathering information. So we um, go and present our information so they become familiar with it. Parents can kind of see what, what we have to offer as well. So. Yeah. And you mentioned if folks have questions, they can always get a hold of you. Give us some contact information about how they can, if they have questions. Okay, I'm, my email is alison at nicf.org. My phone number is 574-223-2202. Feel free to email me or leave a message if I'm not there, and um, I will get back to you. And if you had one tip that you could give students that are looking at applying for or something that maybe they don't they may overlook, um, what what kind of things would you tell students to to be ready for? I would say don't wait till the last minute to fill out the application and give your essays um, some deep consideration because most high school students have done well in high school. So what is going to separate them from their peers is probably their essays. So I would uh, spend some time on your essays and um, give some good thought to that. And, and one other question, if you're a student and you're not sure if any of these scholarships apply, is there a place where we can see a list of, of what's available? Yes, on our website, we do have a list of all the scholarships and the criteria and the el eligibility requirements. So um, again, that's www.nicf.org. Click on Fulton County and click on scholarships and, and you'll find that information right there. It's, it's always neat to see with these scholarships, we often get questions about, well, why is this part of this criteria? And, and you mentioned um, the Eric Smoker Scholarship. Of course, Eric, if you've been around the community, you've seen pieces of his art, whether you realize it or not. Um, and so his family really wanted to continue that tradition through the scholarship. And so when you see criteria, when you're looking at this and saying, why is this criteria? Well, that's that's really something that was important to that person or honoring that person. It's neat to see how these scholarships really continue to leave a legacy of these folks that, that it's honoring in our community. So, well, Allison, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for scholarships. Again, remind folks of the deadline and how to get a hold of you if they have questions. The deadline is March 1st um, next year at 3 p.m. and you can contact me at 574-223-2202. All right, well, thank you, Allison, for for joining us. Thank you. Um, we have over 50 scholarships in Fulton County that support students and education is, is a big part of advancing our community. So thank you to the donors who have set up these funds, made these scholarships possible. Um, it's, it's neat to see when you can tell a student we're helping you financially, but also we as a community believe in you enough that we want to honor you with the scholarship. We want to encourage you to take that next step and, and know that you're not alone. Know that we believe that you can make, you can meet your goals and be successful. So it's neat to see both aspects of that. And of course, the financial encouragement always helps too. College isn't that cheap of a thing anymore. And so um, thank you to the donors who have set up these funds. It's, it's wonderful to see um, how much support our community gives. So one thing that we didn't mention is, again, as heard on WROI, we were able to announce the 2019 Fulton County Lilly Scholar. That's right. Allison, maybe give us a, a brief rundown of that. Shaylee Shriver was um, named the 2019 Lily Scholar. Uh, she's a Valley senior and she's very active in the community and in her school. Um, we were very delighted to be able to award that to her and so she will be receiving a four-year tuition free scholarship and I believe she's attending Purdue. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we're, we were delighted to be able to announce that and uh, present her with that award. Yeah, and Congratulations.
congratulations to Shaylee on on receiving that. Um, it's it's encouraging. If you ever have somebody that says kids are the problem with the world today, have them come talk to us, and we'll get them involved in a scholarship committee. Because by the time you're done reviewing that, you realize that that's not the case. Those a lot of these kids, it's pretty amazing what they've already done through the high school careers and you see that this is the future and it's it's a very encouraging experience to be a part of so um, again congratulations to to shaley and the valley community on um on the 2019 lily scholar so excellent well if you have any questions about what we talked about today um of course you can find a lot of that information on our website, nicf.org. The scholarship applications are on there. Um, if you're looking to make a year-end donation and can't make it into the office, you can click the Donate button and be able to um, donate directly to a fund of your choice that way. Um, Women's Giving Circle dues due by December 31st. Um, we do have the Lily Match two for one on gifts to community funds. So if you're interested in that and have questions about any of the existing funds or interested in setting up a new fund, we'd love to talk to you about that. And um, again, just thank you to our community for supporting things within our community, um, for be, for supporting the foundation and helping us um, help other people make good things happen. So if you have questions about that, like I said, check us out online, nicf.org, our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 228 East 9th Street. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas you may have for our community. Excellent. Brian Johnson, Allison Heidi, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Thank you very much for the time. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. We really yes. do. It's 958 at 92.1 WROI. Remember.